Professor Muller once more for his presentation. And I would like then to welcome Dr. Wong from the University of Hong Kong, who will speak about silver nanoparticles. Thank you. In my slice. So, um, for those of you who have been coming to Klinam for some, some years, I have also been here for a few years, and each time I follow Bert's talk. So, <laughs> I don't know whether it's lucky or unlucky. But anyway, my lab, uh, I'm a surgeon in training, so I do a lot of science, nanoscience. My lab uh, looks into wind healing, regeneration, as well as uh, oncology. So, my other projects would include uh, designing uh, nano carriers for drug delivery for tumors. But to my heart, uh, nano silver is a very sort of old friend of mine. It's my first project in nano medicine. Um, so I've been following up for the past six, seven, 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 eight years. So uh, this paper uh, was published uh, some time back, and basically it described um, the use of silver in, in wound healing. It is, in fact, the use of silver wound, wound healing is, is not new. It's been going on for, for centuries. But in those days, nobody knew it was uh, nanoparticles that we were using. But uh, what people know now is that as well as being very effective in uh, antibacterial properties, silver also has anti-inflammatory properties also. So what my first project uh, done a few years back was look into wound healing and skin wound healing. What we did was create a burn wound in a mouse model and we added silver nanoparticles compared with controls. So very clearly, if you look at uh, this mouse here, by day 25, if you add nano silver, the wound is completely healed, as compared to the current uh, clinical therapy of using silver silvadiazine uh, on the wound, which all, uh, still has a lot of raw area. So we knew that nano silver is very effective in treating skin wound healing. The next uh, K1 project from there was to look at the, the effects of silver on different uh, skin cell types, you know, how they affect the healing itself. So what we found was that uh, if you put silver on in vitro cell culture, uh, keratinocytes and fibroblasts, silver has uh, different effects. They encourage the put, uh, proliferation of keratinocytes, uh, as seen here, but they promote the differentiation of fibroblasts into myofibroblasts. The next question following from there was, how about skin stem cells? Obviously, for healing, you need stem cells to, to proliferate, to differentiate, and to become terminal uh, cell types uh, to, to help healing. So we looked at stem cell markers on the skin during the wound healing with silver. And clearly, you can see that the CD34 here on the hair follicle bulge here and the, the uh, basal layer of the epithelium is, is highlighted with the stem cell marker. So the silver, we know that uh, stem cells are also affected by, 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 by the uh, input of silver. And this is also shown using a different antibody marker, uh, K19. So with regenerative medicine coming on in the, in the 21st century, more and more people are looking using uh, the use of uh, mesenchymal stem cell, MSCs. So obviously, learning from what we learned from the skin wound healing project, we asked whether silver has any effect on MSCs. First of all, we put silver in culture with MSC and looked at proliferation. And by day two, this is an increase of proliferation of stem cells. As well as proliferation, what about differentiation? So we cultured the stem cells with silver together with differentiating a medium. In this case, A is osteogenic uh, medium, B is ethobogenic fat cells, C is chondrocytes, the cartilage. Clearly, you can see that by adding silver with a the different media, the only effect it has is on the osteogenic differentiation, but not the two others. We don't know why this is the case, but it seems to be only affecting this, this, the bone lineage. And we looked in bone uh, markers also. If you look at alkaline phosphatase uh, production uh, from the stem cells using silver, there's a lot of uh, increase in production of alkaline phosphatase uh, in a dose-dependent manner effect. Also, in, in terms of the uh, different uh, bone gene markers, the CBFA1 and osteopontium, they also increase with the addition of silver. So 
so clearly, if it has an effect on, on uh, differentiation of MSC into bone cells, what about treating clinical in fractures? We know that fractures are very common in the, in the population, about three fractures per uh, 100 people in the lifelong risk. And in fact, a lot of uh, fracture healing is delayed because of non-union or infection, other issues. So if we can anyway promote healing, we can save a lot of resources, both in terms of social, economic, as well as uh, psychological prop uh, problems. So the model we use is a, a mouse fracture model. We basically, we open the femur here, expose the femur here, and then we use a pair of uh, scissors or chicle saw to cut open, to cut through the, the femur the femur and put on the plate, and then we inject uh, silver nanoparticles into the, the fracture gap. What we thought would happen is if we co-culture the, the, the MSC with silver before the injection onto the fracture site, was that we would promote differentiation of the MSC into osteoblast, and th subsequently would promote the healing. But surprisingly, if you look in the uh, most right-hand panel here, by day 21, if we put silver with the MSD together into the fracture gap, there's a still a large fracture defect here, it's seen here. Having said that, if you look at putting the silver on its own without the MSC, the gap, if you use 0.2 millimolar, the gap has, has narrowed. And so actually, uh, if you look at the histology, there's already bone formation here, as opposed to a lot of necrotic tissues here. So what we thought was going on was because the stem cells have been put into a, a scaffold, a gel, they, they were deprived of oxygenation, so they all die off. So a lot of necrosis, a lot of inflammation, that result in delay wound healing. So in fact, if you only put silver in, it may just give you the promotion of healing effect. It may also attract the endogenous recruitment of the stem cells from the in vivo bloodstream. So what about mechanisms? We use uh, mass spec, look at proteomics, um, having put in silver with the stem cells, and look at all the sort of protein pr production, and we come up with a TGF beta. And we try to block TGF beta uh, in culture with uh, silver. And with silver here, we block uh, TGF beta, there's no increase in production of stem, uh, bone cells, osteoblasts. So it may suggest that in some way, the silver effect on bone differentiation may be through the TGF beta pathway. So look, having looking through the bone fracture healing, what about other tissues? Uh, if you, for those of you who, who play tennis, this is uh, Pat Cash, Australian uh, champion in Wimbledon in 87. He suffered a Achilles tendon injury, rupture. So the current therapy for Achilles tendon rupture is either you put in the leg in the cast for six to 12 weeks to let it heal by itself, or use surgery using sutures. Obviously, no matter what you do, scar formation after healing is a big problem. So knowing that what we know about silver's property, about infl inflammation, anti-inflammation, we looked into the effect of silver on tenocytes, tendon wound healing. So very clearly, the cell viability was not affected by silver addition, and the collagen production was actually increased having put in silver on the wound. And surprisingly, after healing, after 21 days of healing after silver treatment, if you compare different groups of animals, uh, either a sham operation, basically to open the skin with no cutting of the tendon, compared with silver, the blue one, and the untreated, the no silver, the, uh, the mod tissue modulus in the silver treated group is actually better than the untreated group, but obviously it's less uh, than the sham operator group. You look at the tissue matrix itself, they obviously you stain for the GAG uh, proteoglycans. The more uh, proteoglycans in the tissue matrix in a silver treated group com compared to control. The fibro modulin, the fibrous tissue in a uh, silver treated group compared to the untreated group is less. The TNF alpha suggesting inflammation in the silver treated group compared with untreated group is also less, less inflammation. And if you look at collagen itself, the alignment of collagen 
path to healing with silver is very similar to the Shem operative group. If you look at the untreated group, it's all very disorganized. So in conclusion, we can say that silver has a very positive effect on bone healing and tendon wound healing. There's significant reduction of inflammation and therefore minimizing the fibrotic response after healing. And silver, on its own, may provide a novel therapy for uh, tissue healing and regeneration in orthopedic therapy. What about utilization? We also looked into putting silver on sutures. Obviously, as a surgeon, we want to uh, use sutures for closing wound, uh, skin, intestines, tendon, everything, all the time. We put silver on, on the coating of sutures, and we've shown very clearly, if you put silver on, the antibacterial property is very significant compared to existing antibiotic coated sutures. By day nine, the current commercially available antibiotic coated sutures already lost its effect. Whereas if you coat silver on the suture, the inhibition zone for bacteria is still very significant. So this may be a new direction for uh, my next project. So I'd like to thank uh, my, my lab staff, my students, my postdoc, my uh, collaborators in orthopedics and chemistry, and I thank you for listening. Thank you very much. You're all very, very efficient uh, uh, concerning time. Are there any questions right now here at this point? Yeah, Peter. My name is Peter Wick from EMPA, and I'm wondering if the effect you observe, if the um, silver nanoparticle is really a particle effect and not an ionic effect. And do you check that with a silver suspension or solution? We have used, uh, not, not in the bone, not in the tendon peeling, but for a skin project, an initial project that I did years ago, we compared uh, the silver with silver nitrate, the compound, and certainly with silver nitrate, with the nitrate part itself, it's very toxic. So uh, if, you, if you put silver in the compound, it's definitely no, not very useful. Uh, in terms of the particle size, we compare the silver and other particles with gold as well, and gold has no, no effect either. So it seems that probably it's the silver, silver itself on the, the particle charge on the cell surface has got some, some properties that nobody knows exactly what's going on. And how long the particles survive in the tissue? So how long? Yeah. Uh, for the skin project, initially, we put the silver solution into a dressing, and because it's on skin, we put on a topical application. We change the, the dressing every three days. For the fracture, we put in one injection, in, because we, we created a collagen, collagen gel, and in the gel, we put in silver. So we just put it in during the, the fracture creation, and it was, we just left it there for three weeks and looked at the, the effect. For the tendon, we also uh, injected the silver into the tendon every three days, but obviously, if the, the suture project is going to be uh, exciting, then we may use the suture to suture the tendon uh, to see what, what, what uh, beneficial effects that it has. Uh, but did you follow the particle and how long you find the particle as particle in, in, in the area where you have the surgery? We uh, did not quite, look, look, we did not look at the, the actual local sites, but we looked at the distribution of the silver particles in different organs. And we certainly, you know, after three days, we couldn't see anything in liver or spleen. But you know, even, even within three days, the, the amount of liver, silver, silver level is very low. Um, I don't think it's going to be toxic. Thank you. Um, Adriele Pinamello, Trinity College. Very interesting talk. Um, two questions. The markers you are showing for the proliferation are long-term markers. Osteopontin, uh, CBF-alpha-1 are all seven days effectors, so therefore you don't catch the acute response of the silver. And then you go and compare to TNF-alpha, which is an acute marker. Could you uh, comment on these two conflicting aspects compared to the regenerative aspect of silver? The, the TNF-alpha uh, marker wasn't, wasn't used in the bone fracture uh, project. It was only used in the tendon healing project. So I, I couldn't answer your question. So I have to go back and probably just uh, follow your, your, your comments and, 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 and look at the, the various sort of aspects on that. Uh, 
Um, good question. Um, certainly, if you want to put it in, into the body, uh, as opposed to topically applied on the skin, it's going to be uh, more concerned about the underlying side effects, if not the, the toxic effect of silver. Um, that's uh, I haven't worked on yet, but in terms of the skin, it's, it's more, I've done more work on a skin project than the other two. The, these, the bone and the, and the tendon, have only been two, two and a half years, so I mean, obviously more work needs to be done. But the skin itself, um, they are already commercially available, nano silver coated dressings you can buy. Uh, so in terms of FDA approval, these have been approved. So we, you put it inside the body, that's another, another matter. Ask one final question if nobody else has any burning questions right now. Uh, the silver particles, what is sitting on their surface? I mean, chemically, and can you comment on aggregation of these particles in vitro and in vivo? We, uh, <coughs> it's the size itself, first of all, is, is a, a, it's the average size is about 15 nanometers, and uh, the aggregation, we try to make fresh preparation each time we use it. So aggregation is not a, a problem. We know that if we leave it, if we make a batch of silver nanoparticles and leave it for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and it becomes aggregated in, in solution. Okay. But we, every single experiment, we use fresh preparation. Okay. Thank you very much.